Let's use Fusion 360 to engrave an AR-15 lower receiver. Welcome to another Wednesday widget, folks. Even if you're not into guns, everybody calm down. I think there's actually some really good CAD stuff to be had here, both specific to Fusion 360, as well as just general CAD stuff. One of the things I want to do is show how to take a logo or sketch geometry from an existing design or something that maybe you didn't make and be able to copy that on to yours. In this example, and again, everybody calm down, I happen to have a Glock logo and we're gonna put it on an AR-15. We got both of these um, from respectively GrabCAD and cncguns.com. And what we do, we've just imported the two parts. Now the first thing I'm gonna recommend you do is take a look. This is where we're gonna be pasting the design onto. We just did a video on stitching uh, things in Fusion 360 or making sure you can work with them as a solid model. A quick test will be, let's just do a sketch text, choose this face, type in a text, you know, say letter S, doesn't really matter where, and click, I got a bunch of stuff here open, okay. So we've got that S there, and then choose press pull, zoom in, if you go down below and it doesn't seem to do anything like that, we need to fix the model. We did a video on that, which you can click on here to watch. In that tutorial, I liked doing the boundary fill. I'm getting an error here, so we'll do it the other way, which will be fine. Patch, modify, stitch, select everything. Okay. Now when we sketch a text, we can go ahead and press pull, and you'll see we actually create recessed extruded or cut geometry. Perfect. We've got our Glock slide. Now this one's not intuitive. I'll show how we do it in SolidWorks at the end, which I think is more intuitive, but that just may be because I do a lot more in SolidWorks. We'll create a new sketch, and we'll choose this plane, zoom in, and go sketch, project, project, and click on one, two, Oops, two, three, four. Click OK. Now we'll drag a box left to right over that and then hit Control C, which is keyboard shortcut for copying. Now we can click Stop Sketch. Make sure you don't have anything selected. I do that by dragging a box over here and then go to Sketch, Create Sketch. And for now, we'll just move it up here just to show moving a sketch within the same part and we'll just do control V. It looks like it's not there. For some reason, it's actually all the way over here. Drag it over, and we'll just keep it simple here. Click OK, and then we can do modif uh, create extrude, and choose one, two, three, four, and if you just drag this little guy down, boom. There, we've moved that geometry onto a new part. Now let's move it onto the AR-10 part. The geometry still should be on our Windows clipboard, so let's try Sketch, Create Sketch, choose our plane, Control-V to paste it. Sure enough, it's over there. Drag it over, drag it up. Let's rotate it 90 degrees and move it over here, so click OK. Right click, press pull, select one, two, three, four, and drag it down. Boom. Now I can't figure out how to scale the contours, uh, which I'll show you in SolidWorks is quite easy. So if someone knows how to do that, in Fusion 360 would love to see it. In SolidWorks, the, this process is again a little bit easier. Sketch here and we'll just choose these pieces of geometry and you'll do convert entities. Now I can just hit Control A, Control C, to select all, Control C to copy and exit this sketch, create a sketch up here, paste it and then we can select it, drag it down, we can do scale entities, scale about you know, just pick a point on the thing. That makes it bigger. Let's make it not quite that big. Click OK and drag it back down. 
So I think SolidWorks is both easier and, and so far as I can tell, it's not more capable. I just don't know how to do it in Fusion. So let me know if somebody knows how to scale it. Now let's actually create the text that we want to machine on the AR10 lower. So we've got the file open here. We'll go to Sketch, Text, choose our face, and pick a point, and we'll type it. I like to type this in all caps. And oops, you know what? I wanted to go back to inches, sorry. 0.2 for height and all caps model SMW-10. Rotate that. We'll do the same thing for the next two. Now we'll go to modify Press pull and we'll just select one, two, three, and we just type in negative 0.05. It takes a second to compute. Click OK. Now we've got our text far deeper than it needs to be, but that's OK. Now we'll now before we hop into CAM, we've got to create a work coordinate system. Now I tend to brute force this, and I'm going to use this face here is my Y, and the edge of this is my X, and obviously this is the Z. So let's do this. Sketch a line on this plane, and I'm just going to pick one here and go all the way out to here, and then escape. Sketch another line, like here. Now select this line and that arc, and choose tangent. Perfect. Now I've got a point here. Let's create a point here, sorry. And again, you guys might think this is the wrong way to do it or it takes too long, but it's actually quite quick. Now I'm going to do construct axis perpendicular to face at a point. <laughs> Sounds like a mouthful. Select this and select our point, and now we get a nice axis there. I think that's all we need, I hope. Model cam, setup new setup and we will do orientation select the z-axis plane z-axis sorry and then the z, whatever the mouthful that's the z-axis and the x-axis is this stock point origin is going to be this nope select selected point here we go boom perfect i like it now we got to go back and edit well, actually, we'll do the CAD first, the toolpath first. Trace. For me, I'm going to use a 364 ball end mill. I like engraving with a ball end mill. Bajillions of ways to engrave technologies, tool holders, compression, so forth. You need high RPMs. We don't have as much as we'd like on the Torbach, but I find that the 364 does a nice job. It looks like a proper engraving. It's good if you want to do like a color fill in it. And it doesn't create a burr, it's just more consistent, I have found, with the result that you want. Tool, I've got it programmed up here, ball end mill, 364 fourths. Now geometry, I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but I'm going to fast forward while I select through all these. You'll notice I selected the top curve, so we actually, are, if we posted this right now, we would machine it Z0. So what we do to fix that is simply go to passes, stock to leave, no radial, and then I'm going to control the depth here. We'll say 2,000. We want to uncheck keep tool down. If you don't do that, it will move along at Z negative 2,000 as it moves between geometries, which will look terrible. Now, before we go any further, if we take a simulation look, the problem is we don't have any good stock to work with here. Now, one of the really cool things about, H, uh, about Fusion 360 is that you can choose the solid as the stock, which is really cool, ex except that it's not going to actually give us a good simulation because we already have cavities where we're going to be machining that curve. So it doesn't actually really look that good. So let's do it. What we need to do is go back and figure out the distance between this height and this plane. So model, inspect, if we pick this face, 
and hold down control and pick that face, we see the distance is one eighth of an inch. So go back into cam, it's under setup, right click, edit, and stock, do fixed box size. I don't really care about the box size, I care about its position here. So we'll do offset from Z top, I think it would default to center for you if you haven't done this yet. And we'll just say, well it's already in there, negative 0.125, click OK, and that creates a box that's at the height plane that we're working. Now if we generate toolpath, and go into simulation, click play. This is pretty accurate. It's not perfect and we should run a test piece especially before you go engrave an AR lower let alone someone else's AR lower. But it should be good. Parts in our vise, we're just using one parallel. Just hold it down by hand and what you want to check with engraving really need to make sure you're flat here. That's only really half a thou of run out of that Heimer's in metric and none at all really measurable that way, which is great. We measured our X or our Y offset on this back edge here and our X offset on the edge here and obviously our Z here. We also did a quick test cut off camera and you can see looks nice and crisp. So should be good to go on this receiver. All right, here we go. We're using the Canon L-Series glass. So I've got it cantilevered over the mill uh, enclosure to give a real close-up view, which hopefully will work out pretty cool. Here's actually a view of it. You can see the lens is actually still pretty far away, but boy, it really zooms in. And a lot of folks have asked about our setup, and uh, that lens was a big splurge for us. We, we, we love it, though, and we put a enclosure, or what do you call it, a filter on the front and haven't had any problems uh, with it, with chips and so forth. But um, looks for a good setup. So let's take a quick look at this engraving and then we'll fast forward through the rest. You know, I should have, uh, my fault, I should have reduced the rapid uh, plane and the safe plane because we're spending a lot of time moving down at one or two inches a minute, three inches a minute, sorry, when uh, you really only need to go slow uh, on the last little bit as you're plunging into the material. There we have it folks, take a look, not half bad. You can see the AR-10 engraving, it looks really nice. It really pops though, as you see on the AR-15 receiver, when you Cerakote it or, or finish it first and then you machine away to a brighter color. The, some people actually like the subtle look of the black on black, like this AR-10 will look after we Cerakote it. But I think this is a great solution. It's a nice way to engrave. You need to make sure your Z-plane is flat but it turns out really nice. There's no real burrs or, or snags and so forth. For you guys that are DIY gunsmiths or want to form one your own NFA items, it's a, it's a way to mark them and have them look professional. So with that folks, I hope you enjoyed today's Wednesday widget. Take care, see you soon.